The Gyro X was designed and built in the late 1960s through the partnership of Alex Tremulus and Thomas Summers. This design was their answer to increasing fuel efficiency. By reducing the frontal area of the vehicle, aerodynamic drag is reduced and the vehicle therefore requires less energy to attain and maintain speed. To achieve a significant reduction in the frontal area of the vehicle, the body was narrowed to the point of having only two inline wheels, and the solution to maintaining the vehicle balance was to incorporate an active directional gyro system. At the core of the gyroscope is a flywheel, a wheel-shaped mass of steel, 17 inches in diameter, weighing 230 pounds and rotating at 3,000 revolutions per minute. The flywheel, with an integrated axle, is sandwiched between two halves of a housing that support the flywheel spin axis. This is called a gimbal housing. At the top and bottom of the gimbal housing, two support flanges are installed. These support flanges allow the gimbal housing to pivot. The axis created by this pivot point is called the gimbal axis. Once the gimbal housing is installed in the spherical support housing, there is a narrow band within the gimbal axis, about 60 degrees total movement from left to right, where the flywheel can be controlled to make corrections in the balance of the vehicle. With the sphere assembled, the unit is mounted in the vehicle frame between the driver and front wheel. The gyro assembly is used in conjunction with the control system. The control system senses and measures imbalances in the vehicle and, in response to an imbalance, activates an arm attached to the gimbal housing in a movement called precession, where rapid movement of the gimbal housing in either direction precesses the flywheel left or right, counteracting imbalances in the opposite direction. The magic of the gyro is in the stored energy available for work. This is known as kinetic energy. The mass of the flywheel, the diameter, and the speed at which it rotates determines the amount of stored kinetic energy available for work. When the control system senses an imbalance in the vehicle, the precessional cylinder is activated, resulting in the precession of the flywheel. The kinetic energy stored in the spinning flywheel, with the rapid precession of the flywheel, produces torque. The torque is then transmitted into the vehicle frame, resulting in the correction of the position of the vehicle. Given that the weight, size, and speed of the flywheel are fixed measures, the rate, or speed, of the precession is what determines how much available energy is used, or can be used. With only two inline wheels, at rest or in motion, the gyro system must make frequent adjustments to the balance of the vehicle to keep it upright. In addition to the vehicle at rest, let's look at a number of common conditions the gyroscope will encounter. The gyro must deal with momentary forces, like a sudden gust of wind. Here, a sudden force is applied to each side of the vehicle, and the resulting precessional movement of the gyro to maintain vehicle balance is demonstrated. Additionally, there are many conditions where the imbalance is continuous, like a continuous side wind. Here, it is demonstrated that because of a force acting on either side where the force remains, a new point of balance is established, and the flywheel assumes a position of constant precession. The vehicle is now moving in a straight line, which is similar to that of standing still. The gyro must make continuous corrections to keep the vehicle in balance. In addition, the aerodynamics of the vehicle, as well as the front wheel geometry, play an important role in the stabilization of the vehicle when in motion. In a turn, the vehicle must lean. This is both for efficiency, not losing energy in the form of braking, and because at some point in speed and in turn radius, the gyro would not have enough energy in the form of torque to maintain the vehicle upright. By leaning into turns, most of the force created by the vehicle turning is transmitted through the wheels into the ground. The restoration of the 1967 Gyro X was an ambitious undertaking and the history of this unique vehicle was nearly lost until Jeff Lane, founder of Lane Motor Museum in Nashville, Tennessee, learned its story and seized the opportunity to purchase what remained of the Gyro X. Over the next five years, countless hours were dedicated to bringing it back to life in both form and function. Although the Gyro X is very much today as it was in 1967, it remains a highly complex piece of machinery. While the Gyro X did prove that a gyroscopically stabilized automobile could work, it would certainly have required a great deal more development before any form of production could have been considered. Were it to be developed today, the use of modern materials for the structure, as well as a hybrid or pure electric drivetrain, would go a long way to making a successful gyroscopically stabilized vehicle.